Okay, so I am midway through a video on how to extract potassium carbonate from bananas, and I currently have a rather concentrated solution. However, I am having trouble getting it to crystallise out, and it is taking absolutely forever. Now, I can't do what I'd usually do and boil it down, because I risk thermally decomposing the carbonates, which is what I'm after in the first place, so it wouldn't particularly serve any purpose to try and boil it down. Also, um, uh, at high temperatures, potassium carbonate can eat through glass and quite a lot of other things, because it's very alkaline. So, what I really need is a faster way to dry it out, and I can't use heat, so I'm going to try and build a desiccator. Now, what this does is it uses an extremely hydroscopic chemical, which is something that takes in water, so it takes the water from the air, which dries out the air, which causes it to evaporate faster. So, what you really need to make a simple one of these is just a Tupperware container, um, a piece of cardboard, fairly simple, some glue, again, fairly simple, and you need something to act as the desiccant. Now, you can use silica gel, there's a whole range of things you can use for this, but because I have loads of it and it's fairly cheap to get, I'm going to use copper sulfate. This was actually bought from Amazon, I've already used it in my making sulfuric acid, so I'll probably put a link in the description for up to where I got this. If you want to do it, and you want to do is you want to divide the area in this roughly in two and put a dividing piece of cardboard into the mixture. So you need to roughly work out how long it needs to be, put it right there, get it till it just about fits in, you want this to be fairly sealing, so it just goes in there, fits rather well, and then you want to cut off the top portion of it, because you don't want this to go right up to where the lid is, and just put down the corners, because mine is um, uh, slightly curved in the way it's made. So that will fit down in there, right across the middle. doesn't have to be particularly amazing. I'm just going to mark out two vials worth, just so I can get the maximum amount of things in. So, Should I want to dry more things out? So you've got one, got two, that should work. Right. Get whatever brand of glue you particularly like to use and glue that in place. I find an easy way to do it is to just get the edge of the cardboard, put a line of glue all along it, just on all the main surfaces, and just slide and press it down. Then get the stuff that's squeezed out the sides and just sort of run it along the edge to vaguely tidy everything up, make it fairly sealed and do that on the other side. If you want to make a slightly better seal, just put a load of glue on the end of one of these and just sort of spread it along the bottom. That'll do. So, yep, leave the glue to dry, and whilst that's doing that, I will begin to prepare the desiccant. Okay, so copper sulfate in its natural state, or hydrated state, as I should say, there are some natural occurring forms of the anhydrous form, is blue. It's what everyone recognises it as, but like this, it will not be act as a desiccant, it won't do anything. This is because it is the hydrated form. So in between all of the crystals is water molecules that are locked in. If we heat this, we will drive off the water and it will become white anhydrous sulfate. So I've got my little spirit burner here. Try not to whack your camera with that. And because I am, as many people know, 
the most safe human being in the world. I'm just going to hold it over the top. And it should begin to turn white. It should also, you should see it clouding up along here because the water that is being boiled out is being released. So this is probably going to take quite a while, this amount of chemicals. So I will cut back when it has finished. And midway through the heating process and you can clearly see the steam coming off the top. And if you look down at the stuff on the bottom, it has begun to go white. The stuff on the top is rather clumped together because as it's being heated and the water is coming off the below stuff, it's going into the um, uh, top stuff. So it's it takes a while just to boil off all the water in this. But it is actually quite impressive, this might just be me being sad, but it's quite impressive that this amount of dry crystals, or seemingly dry crystals, contains this much water. So most of the um, uh, steam has stopped now, and most of it's gone completely white. There's still a few bits of blue because it's been condensing on the inside. I'm not going to try and get it any further because this should work well enough that you don't need it completely anhydrous. So now I've got to get it out of the flask because the problem is with the water it all stuck together and it's stuck in a massive lump down at the bottom. So I will cut back when I've worked out a way to do that. Okay so what you want to do is a final step, transfer your anhydrous sulphate into one side of the container. It's all there, I've got a fair amount. Then get whatever you want to dry, put it in the other side, get the lid of the Tupperware container and just put it down making a airtight seal and you have a desiccator so all you need to do now is leave whatever's in there to dry and occasionally this will be after every few dries you might need to get the copper sulfate out and heat it up again to drive off all the moisture it will have accumulated but Pretty much, once you've got this, you're fine to just keep drying things out, keep making crystals.